We are back, ladies and gentlemen, for another great edition of this podcast. That is called The Hit. I am, of course, you know, Logan Grafia. He is the fantastic Calvin Rhines. And let's just get right into it, Calvin. LSU and Tulane didn't play. That's the two top schools in Louisiana right now in college football. So before I give the rundown of the boot scores, let's go straight to you for a quick rundown of the top 25. What you got for us, Calvin? All right, so Kentucky beats, uh, loses to Tennessee, uh, who's tied with uh, Ohio State for two, I believe. So we have a one, two, and four type situation going on here. Uh, Georgia hangs on to number one because they beat Florida 42 to 20. I think we all knew how that was going to pan out. Ohio State beats Penn State. Uh, pretty decent game there. Michigan beats Michigan State. And then uh, everyone decided to jump a Michigan man, I believe it was, in their tunnel. So it was, I guess it was. so. So who, like him. so who really won that? Who knows? I think everybody <laughs> lost. Um, Oregon beats Cal. Uh, you have Missouri upsetting South Carolina. I don't really know if that's much of an upset because they were number 25, South Carolina was. Uh, NC State barely holds on to a win against Virginia Tech to retain number 24. Um, Notre Dame, they beat Syracuse. Ole Miss beats Texas A&M. I mean, we know how that's going to happen there. Um, I believe, what was it, Oklahoma State lost, didn't score, got shut out, I believe it was. Yes, the Kansas State. They got shut out by Kansas State. Talk about an absolute upset. 48-0, to zero, Kansas State, number 22, beats number 9. What an insane game that was. I mean, I wasn't expecting that at all. I'll tell you that much. Um, and number 14, Utah beats Washington State. And just about everything else went about how you think it would have went in the top 25 this week. Um, you see LSU moved up this week a couple spots. Two lanes still in the top 25. Shout out to them. Um, and then, like I said earlier, you have Tennessee and Ohio State sharing that number two spot in the college football rankings. Well... I was pleasantly surprised to see LSU move up because usually when LSU doesn't play, you know, they like to move them out the top 25 or they like to move them down many, many spots below. It's very nice to see LSU move up and also Tulane. Tulane's getting a lot of love this year, and that makes me very happy considering Tulane for many years has not been known for football. I mean, they're known for their football, but they're – no one ever thought they'd be in the top 25. I mean, it's been since Sean King since they've been in the top 25, so it's very nice to see. So a quick rundown of some scores across the boot, the great boot. Uh, the Raging Cajuns fell to the Southern Miss Golden Eagles 24-39, to and Calvin's Louisiana Tech Bulldogs fell to FIU 42-34. to My Southeastern Lions beat McNeese barely 28-27. And the Nichols Colonels fell to Lamar 24 to 17. Now, Calvin, just before we, since LSU didn't play, we're going to move kind of quickly through this topic. For the, if you had to pick your final four for the playoffs, Calvin, for the college football, who would your one through four be? Uh, Tennessee, Ohio State, Georgia, and, um, Probably Alabama if they keep winning, honestly. I mean, you know how the top 25 poll is. They're always going to try to sneak Alabama in there no matter what. You might see Clemson get there. Who knows? Uh, Michigan is there, but, I mean, you know. Um, but I, I see Alabama getting in there. I mean, it's I hate to say it, but, <laughs> I mean, you know how they are. I hate to say it, too. But, I mean, they don't get in, uh, I don't think. I think this weekend – is going to be very, very interesting, Calvin. I'm not going to say who's going to win or going to lose. I'm not going to touch that one because I want us to have some good juju, so I'm going to stay silent on that. But if you had to ask me, I'd say Ohio State. No, actually, I would say Georgia, then Ohio State, then Tennessee. Then, I mean, number four is up for grabs. I mean, what is USC ranked right now, Calvin? Uh, I believe last time I checked, they're ranked. Uh, let me see right now. USC rankings. USC in the top 25 poll is. Shout out to everything moving slow. 
They have moved <laughs> up one spot to number nine. They are at number nine. You know what? I'm going to be very crazy here and say that number four, a sleeper team this year, who has just been surprising people, shout out to their offense. Let me guess. TCU. TCU. Let me guess TCU. I don't know how you knew I was going to say that, but give me TCU at number four. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they would get blown out by by Georgia or any of those teams, but that is my one through four. And we're going to move off of college football and go right into, honestly, I can't believe I'm saying it's a happy occasion this time, Calvin. The New Orleans Saints beat the Las Vegas Raiders 24-0, to zero, marking the first time that the Saints have had a shutout in the Superdome since 2012, which was... Sean Payton's suspension year for Bounty Gate. Now, I got to just say this, Calvin. Both sides of the ball looked very impressive. And is, is it a coincidence? It's kind of a coincidence that Sean visits the facility and the Saints look like a Sean Payton team, right? I mean, is it, is it kind of like not a coincidence? Because, I mean, it's got to be, right? It's It's a... I don't even know what to say. I'm kind of speechless on the topic because I wasn't expecting us to really beat the Raiders like we did. But Andy Dalton looked good. Alvin Kamara looked good. Taysom Hill, of course, looked good. The offensive line has been looking good in recent weeks. The defense finally stepped up because I was worried because Josh Jacobs the last three weeks has averaged over 100 and something yards. They held him in check. Devontae Adams only had one catch for three yards. So... All in all, this was a great game on both sides of the ball. I got to shout out the whole team for this one because it has been the Blues this year, Calvin. It really has. It really has been the Blues this year, and I was quite impressed. Andy Dalton had an efficient game. Alvin Kamara finally got in the end zone. We finally, Pete Carmichael finally said, hey, let me get the ball to my best playmakers in the red zone, and it, it worked. So, Got to shout out the whole team. This was a great team win. Now, the I want to get your take on this. Do you think we will see the same team Monday night against Baltimore? Because, you know, Saints historically do not do great against running quarterbacks, and Lamar tops them all for mobile quarterbacks. Um, Yeah, maybe if Sean Payton comes take another visit. Uh, I mean, I, I will say uh, – I, I don't think it's a coincidence. I just find it really weird that we started doing Sean Payton type things when Sean Payton visited. Maybe he put his uh his foot in the theoretical gumbo uh that is the Saints just real quick, just came and popped a little little seasoning in while nobody was looking, and, you know, slid a little couple plays underneath Pete Carmichael's offense or something. Um But I mean, if we play like this, I'm not really worried about the Ravens because if you really think about it, uh Mark Andrews has been banged up. Uh, this year, the last two games especially. Um, so I'm not really concerned about because really that's the only weapon they have. Rashad Bateman, he's he's down with a little foot injury right now. Uh, Mark Andrews is banged up with his shoulder, and he has something going on with his lower body uh, two games ago. Um, so if you really think about it, their offense isn't that lethal in terms of receivers, and then we should be getting Marshawn back as well. So, I mean, their receiving core, as we know, is probably bottom five in the league outside of Mark Andrews, and he's not even a receiver, so still bottom five. Um, their defense, I mean, is good, is decent, it'll get the job done. Um, I, I think, like, it's just really going to come down to just containing Lamar, just staying true to your your coverage um, in the scramble drills, because there will be scramble drills. If the D-line decides to show off like they did uh, against the Raiders, then I think we'll be fine. Um, Peyton Turner decided – he he just remembered that he was a first round draft choice uh and decided to get two sacks in one game. Uh so I'm very happy about his first game back. Um Honey Badger gets an interception. He he dropped he dropped another interception, so he could have had two interceptions. Uh Pete Werner, what I mean, what can I say about Pete Werner? I mean, the the guy the guy just might win best linebacker. He just might. I mean He's he's so amazing. I've never really seen this guy miss a tackle. I mean, the guy's so solid. Um, like I said, D line woke up. Offensive line hasn't given up a sack in about three games. Uh, I think the stat was. So we finally figured it out there. I posted it on Twitter. 
just about every problem that we had that needed to be fixed seemed like it got rectified. D-line got fixed. The coverage pieces got fixed because Alante Taylor was absolutely locked down on Devontae Adams. Shout out to him. Um, he's he's going to be definitely big for us. Um, O-line, that got fixed. We started implementing Alvin Kamara in the passing game, and you see what happens. He had zero touchdowns through seven weeks, and in one game, he got three. Um, you started implementing Rashid Shaheed more in the game. I've seen him more than one time in the game. Um, Chris Olave, he's back and healthy, it seems. The guy is fantastic. Um, yeah, man, every every problem that needs to be fixed just about got fixed. I mean, albeit we only scored 24 points, but it was a good 24 points. I think we only punted it, like, what, twice, maybe three times max. I mean, that's a good game. We held the ball for most of the game. We – we didn't even allow them to uh, have cross a play. The 50. Yeah, cross the 50 up until their last drive, uh, the garbage until time. Until basically drive. garbage time, yeah. And it's they the still didn't score drive. garbage time. Exactly. And, and, I mean, you all know how difficult it is to shout out a team at any level. Um, and we just did it again. We did it last year uh, against Tom Brady. Um, so, Dennis Allen, I guess, decided, you know what, maybe I'll just take control of this defense again. It seems like this was more of a Dennis Allen defense than – what we've seen all year. Um, and this was definitely a Pete Carmichael. Pete Carmichael was in his Louis Vuitton bag this game. I got to <laughs> give him that. But if we can, you know, like, you know, like uh, like Alvin Kamara said, swag ain't nothing if it, if it ain't consistent. So I'm going to hold my thoughts until next week. And maybe this season can be turned around if we start playing like this for the rest of the season. So that's what I got on that. Well, I can't disagree with anything that you said, and I got to compliment the offensive line play because, I mean, going into the season, I made it very clear that my number one worry was the offensive line in the past three weeks or the past few weeks. They haven't let the quarterback get sacked, and I mean, you got to shout out Andy for getting the ball out quick, so I mean, that kind of helps the offensive line there that he's not holding the ball all day long, so got to shout out the offensive line. I got to shout out, got to shout out Andy Dalton. I mean, after the game where against Arizona, where <laughs> two pick sixes, he came out. He had he now he had a near miss against the Raiders. I gotta say that was a horrible pass. I don't know what that was about, but I gotta shadow Andy Dalton. He had a really really efficient game, and he definitely bounced back after kind of a a terrible game against the Cardinals. And like you said, we got Alvin Kamara in the, involved in the passing game more, and Rashid Shaheed. I mean, got Alave involved more when he was targeted. I mean, now Alave had one catch that he should have caught. It was on a quick slant route. It hit him right in his hands. If he would have caught it, gone. He just dropped it. And then I, was, I was in my living room just like, why? <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was a, all around. I mean, balanced offense, so play calling. Defense was very stout. I mean, the whole Devontae Adams in check is something, so. I'm thinking, I'm not saying this team is going to make the playoffs, but you get Michael Thomas and maybe Jarvis Landry back and give Andy Dalton those two guys, then maybe we could see like the Andy Dalton from the Cincinnati days, you know, because I mean, we're not, we don't count the Cowboys and the Bears days because we only, Andy Dalton was a bingo. We don't care about the Cowboys and the Bears. So you get those two guys back and we could and let in. I don't know. It's I'm puzzled because I I wasn't expecting us to win like this. So, but I, with the win, we suffered a loss. We uh, Mark Ingram is now going to be out three to four weeks, Calvin, and the trade deadline is vastly approaching. If I'm not mistaken, it's today or tomorrow. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. So. I am expecting us to make a trade, maybe for our running back. I mean, Cam Akers is out there, Kareem Hunt's out there, but we shall see. And now, I will say, um, I, I definitely expect us to. I mean, I know how everybody is right now. Like, we need to use all of our draft picks. I mean, I don't really agree. Um, I really think the only draft picks we directly need to use is if we had a first round pick. Uh, one, two, and three. Like that's really the only rounds that I really care about using because we seem to hit in those rounds in more cases than not. Uh, we've hit sometimes in four, 
But I'm not really relying on it because our fourth round picks and below uh, have not made the team the last like two years now. Whether or not that's attributed to our depth or because they are just bad, um, maybe a little bit of both. But um, Saints seem like they find good talent. I mean, especially at the running back position. I mean, I'm, if we don't trade for running back, I'm not really worried about it because running backs are a dime a dozen. I mean, you can find you a Tony Pollard in undrafted free agency. Like, that's just the truth of the running back position. I mean, we've seen Philip Lindsay drop a thousand yards a couple years ago. And now this man can't even get on the field. That's just how it works in the running back world. Um, but I, I can definitely see us giving up a fourth round pick or a fifth round pick for a cream hunt, which I personally would agree with. It's little, it's very steep price for uh, a backup who's going to be uh, probably only here for about a year, year and a half, because I don't think we're going to be able to pay him whatever the hell he wants to be paid. But at the same time, um, it's Mickey Loomis. And if y'all remember back in 2017, Alvin Kamara and Kareem Hunt's rookie year, Kareem Hunt and Alvin Kamara were going head to head, like ever toe to toe just about the whole season in, in the offensive rookie of the year rankings. And Alvin Kamara ended up pulling it out. So as far as I'm concerned, you get two guys who are offensive rookie of the years in the same time, and I'm uh, and Kareem Hunt is still a very good running back. I mean, don't don't get that twisted. And he hasn't been hurt or anything. Like he's he's you know knock on wood there. But I, I would really love to have Kareem Hunt as a backup. I mean, it will replace Mark. Mark can go retire in peace and walk off in the sunset. And we we basically have boom and zoom again because Kareem Hunt is boom. I mean that's. That's what he is. And he's also pretty decent in the passing game, too. So I'm I'm all on the Kareem Hunt train. Trade the fourth round pick. I don't give a damn about it. Um, Cam Akers is all right. He's just, I mean, he has the Achilles injury. I mean, I, eh, he's whatever. I, I was never really too impressed with Cam Akers. But um, I, I definitely think uh, Saints, Saints should do something. Never know. Maybe they trade for quarterback. Well, who knows? But. Uh, I also have a big hot take here, too, for all those people out there who wants to draft a quarterback. Oh, I, I have a hot take. The hot take is we don't draft a quarterback. And then let me tell you why. Mickey Loomis is a cheapskate. We know this, all right? Um, the team also likes continuity. If Andy Dalton can continue to to rise, his like to, to elevate his play each game, I can definitely see the Saints saying, well – he was pretty good and serviceable, and he didn't really lose his game, so why get somebody else? I mean, yeah, they'll probably maybe still draft a guy, but I really wouldn't be surprised if they went in another direction, like D-line or linebacker or corner. Like, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we just rolled Andy Dalton for probably another year. Um, and, I mean, that's not bad. It's not what we all want, but – I mean, he could probably take. be the bridge quarterback. I mean, that is a hot take, but, I mean, I, I – think we need to draft a quarterback i really really do but um we could ride the Andy Dalton train this year and maybe he could be the bridge for our, our draft pick for next year until he's ready but i'm on the draft the quarterback train i mean i really would love Hendon hooker but maybe i'm starting to think that's a pipe dream now but uh, as far as running back i'm not opposed to kareem hunt or even cam Akers. i mean i know cam Akers hasn't really panned out that much in LA, but we've seen it where some a guy gets traded, goes elsewhere, and just absolutely blows up. I mean, we've seen it as Saints fans many times. I mean, we trade Reggie Bush, and he goes blows up for Miami. He's the lead back in Miami, and the, he looks like the guy from USC. So it's going to be very interesting tomorrow, Calvin, considering the deadline is tomorrow. So moving on to our final topic. The New Orleans Pelicans, Calvin, this is such a happy topic for you and I because, I mean, let's be honest. The team is good. The <laughs> team is good. Yeah. I mean, I, I just have no more words to describe the Pelicans because I'm just stupefied. I mean, I'm not surprised. It's just I'm in love right now because New Orleans basketball down here has not been good for such a long time. I mean, before last year in the playoffs, before that, we – Last time we saw the playoffs was when Anthony Davis and Nico Miritich was cutting up. Mm-hmm. And then before that, I, it was when we barely got into the playoffs and we got swept by the Golden State Warriors. Warriors. Yep. I mean, it has not been pretty. The last pretty team that we've had that almost went to the finals was that 2007-2008 New Orleans Hornets team. Chris Paul, David West, Tyson Chandler, Morris Peterson, Tejas Stiakovic. I can go on and on and on. Byron Scott was the freaking head coach. This team 
look, I'm not gonna say it looks similar to that team, but man, we have depth that I never thought I'd see the New Orleans basketball team have. Calvin, I mean, our our second line could be a starting five for some team in the NBA right now, and I'm sure a team like the Lakers. <laughs> Wish they had depth like this, or wish they had the second line that we have. But Wednesday is going to be very fun for us, Calvin. Coming off of a win, I mean, we're going back to the place that we just won at in the crypto arena playing the Clipper, Clippers. Excuse me. Lakers, Pelicans, not 30, Louisiana time. It is going to be either fun or it's going to be miserable, Calvin. Now, Zion is back, and we are waiting for her to return. We are waiting for Brandon Ingram to return. Brandon Ingram is probably going to come back for that Warriors game that's coming up Friday in the arena. Got to get your opinion on this. Calvin, Wednesday against the Lakers. Do you think we come out with the win? I know that's probably just a simple, dumb, stereotypical question, but what do you think? I mean, we should. I mean, uh, but it is the Lakers. It's LeBron. It's you know all, they just got their first win, so I'm I wouldn't be surprised if they ride the wave on that win and have a little bit of momentum for probably the next two to three games, and then go back on a losing streak like baseball. I say baseball. Shout out. I got the got the playoffs on my mind. Uh, but um, yeah, basketball is a game of runs. It it really is. I mean, and that goes for in game and out of game. Uh, you go on win streaks. That's that's really all it is. So the key to having a good record is to just string win, uh, string some wins together. And you know, a bad record is you string losses together. And I think you'll see a Lakers team, they'll probably win two to three, and everybody will be like, oh, my God, the Lakers are back. And then they're going to lose six straight. Um, I can see it. Or maybe they'd be like us last year, and they go one and 12 in their first 13, um, which I would love if that happened. Uh, and I don't see them doing like what we did. I, I, and they, I don't think they'll climb out of it like we did uh, and, <laughs> and make it to a play in. Um, but we should we should come out with a win. Um, everybody's playing very well. We're finding ways to win without all of our starters, and it just has to be said. We have to keep everybody on the floor. We just have to. I mean, we can't have these stretches where Zion's out and Brand Ingram's in, or Brand Ingram's uh, out and Zion's in. Like we need everybody to be on the court. Like I need to get at least a twenty or thirty game stretch where Bi. Zion, Herb, Jonas Valanciunas, and CJ are all hands on deck and all healthy. We haven't seen it yet, but hopefully we see it this year. Brandon Ingram, he's getting a little injured a lot recently, even towards the end of last year. So I'm a little worried about him. But Well, this year was friendly fire, so you can't really blame that on him. I mean, those games before he got his concussion, he was dropping 28. So I'm not worried yeah. about that. I mean... Outside of that, I mean, he's played through injury, so I'm not worried about Brandon Ingram. Zion's back. CJ is playing with, I think, a sprained finger that he had suffered in practice. I mean, against the Clippers, I was getting kind of worried because we got down a little bit. Then we just came back and exploded on these guys. We came back and won, you know, by 20 points. Now, let me and tell you I this. Mean, this, is, this is the mark of a good team, right? I'm going to say this. And for everybody watching, y'all can play this little game with me. So our starters that night were Zion, Najee Marshall, uh, CJ McCollum, uh, Trey Murphy, and Jonas Valanciunas. Now, if I said these points, this is all the starters' points, 22, 11, 15, 21, 17. Y'all wouldn't even know who scored what. That's the mark of a good team. Everybody had just about balanced scoring. Would y'all believe me if I told y'all that Najee Marshall was the one that scored 17 and Jonas scored only 11? Would y'all believe me if I told y'all that Zion wasn't even the one who scored 22? It was CJ. Mm -hmm. And then Trey Murphy is scoring 15. And then Larry Ness off the bench scores 15. Who's That's the same as a starter. I mean... We got depth, Calvin. This is the first time I think that this is the deepest New Orleans basketball team we've had since probably... Man, maybe the Byron Scott era, I mean, it's been that long, man. It really has, and it's quite refreshing to see. Love Willie Green. I love this whole team. I mean, can't ask for much more. I mean, the balance, scoring, and the firepower that we have. I mean, now, we can't, came up short just a few, a couple games ago, but 
We're four that was, and two. That was due to ref play. That, that yeah, the two game. The two losses that we suffered. I, I, mean, I don't want to put it all on the refs, but I mean the one against the Jazz. I will put it on the referees, and then I can't remember the other loss. You can refresh my memory on that, Calvin. I, I don't even remember it either. I'm not. I don't remember losses around here. I don't, I don't <laughs> all right, remember but, wins. Well, we're four and two right now, and we have a better record than a lot of. Oh. It was the Suns. That's right. It was the Suns. We just played the Suns. Wow. My CTE is kicking in already this early in the day. Anyway, um, man, you get Brandon Ingram back, we might go on a, a win streak. I'm not saying we're going to win 10 in a row, but it's quite possible. So, I mean, second in the division right now. San Antonio is winning the division right now. That's, that's San Antonio insane. and the Jazz are surprise teams for me, Calvin. No one thought they was going to be great this year. I mean, not great, good this year. I mean, let's be honest. We did not expect the Jazz or the Spurs to be that good this year, but we have a better record than the Warriors right now, Kevin. And they're they're the reigning champs. That's that's yeah. saying something. But right now, we have a better record. We know how the Warriors are. They're going to just one of these days just blow up and just go on a twenty game freaking win streak because they're shooting like a hundred percent from the freaking three. They shoot ungodly numbers from the three over there and go and stay. It makes me angry. But um. Man, can't say enough about this Pelicans team. It's how fun would it be? I'm not saying this would happen, but how fun would a finals be if it had, a, say, the Pelicans versus the Cavaliers? You know, Zion versus Donovan Mitchell. That would be just something I would love to see, Calvin. I don't know about you. That would just be something I'd like to see. I I just I don't care who the hell we play, honestly. I just <laughs> <laughs> Just win, baby. Shout out out there. I mean, maybe maybe go against Giannis. I mean, that would be fun. Zion beats Giannis. I mean, that's hey, that would be a nice little storyline. Um, the Celtics. I mean, that would be cool. Obviously, the Knicks ain't gonna make it, but I think it'd be hilarious <laughs> if if Knicks we just beat the Knicks it. in the finals. That would just be that would just be the, the full circle moment of of Knicks fandom right there. If, if Knicks go to finals and Pelicans beat them with Zion, I mean, that's that's amazing stuff right there. Well. We are kind of at the end of the show, and I just want to say this. I know a lot of people out there were expecting me after, you know, Andy to get the job to come on this show and say, hey, I told you so, ha, 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 ha. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to st- stoop to anybody's level. I'm just going to, you know, stay professional because you and I had this talk. I'm like, Calvin, should I do that? And no. I was like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stoop to their level. This ain't high school anymore, so – not gonna do that so we're at the end of the show and i want to wrap it up by saying this i cannot wait for victor wimbin yama to be on the pelicans next year calvin the lakers miss i mean i have made it very clear i have been a fan of lebron since he came into the league i mean in 2003 i only remember how old i was in 2003 it's been that long so i was born in 96 and this is in 2003 y'all do the math at home i mean i've been a fan of his since then but seeing the Lakers do horrible it just makes me very happy. I don't like seeing LeBron do bad, but I'm happy that we're going to get Victor Wimbin Yama if they keep doing bad. And they got Lakers fans saying that, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Y'all not going to get the number one pick. Well, we shall see come July. And let me just say this to if there's any Laker Nation fans out there watching. You better be prepared for a lot of ignorant stuff all over social media if that happens. It's I'm warranted. Tell you right now. It's warranted. If if we even get a top five pick, like really, <laughs> like Victor obviously is what everybody wants. But if we get if they get the second pick, hey, Scoot, Scoot would probably be low key better fit with this team than Victor. Scoot is really luck. good too. I mean, a name like Scoot. I mean, come on, who that that's. There's Come scoot. on now, that, that just fits down here, doesn't it? <laughs> and then, of course, you know you got Amen Thompson, uh, Nick Smith, Derek Whitehead, Cameron Whitemore, uh, Whitemorehead, and stuff like that. I mean, all those guys are great. Like, it, get, give give the Pelicans a top five pick. It doesn't matter. Like, whoever we draft is going to be insane. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It really. I'm excited, Calvin. I'm excited to see where we are after 82 games. I really am. I'm more excited. I'm never I'm been excited this... about where the Lakers are going to be. That's what I'm excited about. I know where we're <laughs> going to be, but the Lakers, that's that's why I need to know where they're going to be at. Well, I mean, I also want to wrap it up by saying this. Shout out just 
the whole Saints team, I mean, from top to bottom, that win was impressive. I know the Raiders aren't that great of a team, but top to bottom, impressive. Shout out to each and every position out there from quarterback to freaking D-line, even all the way to the freaking special teams, I got to shout out. I mean, even- hey, you you say that, that you know the Raiders are a bad team, but I mean, how often do we see a Saints team actually beat teams that we're supposed to beat in that fashion? We always stoop to our competitions to every time. Every we time. Stoop so down this to is their great. level every time. You are correct on that, Calvin. Well, I mean, I don't have anything else, Calvin, unless you have something to add. Um, happy Halloween. Don't dress up as Jeffrey Dahmer for Halloween. Um, <laughs> or you deserve to get beat. Um, as you can see, I have my Saints Halloween. There you go with my boy Mike, Freddie, and Jason. Um, y'all be safe out there. Uh, the world's crazy. It's Halloween. Uh, uh, mind your surroundings, things like that. Um, yeah, that's all I got for y'all, man. Well, we're going to end it on that, Calvin. This has been another fantastic show of the hit. And we will be back next week at some time. So we shall see you then. Ta-ta.